You're listening to the Classically Trained Podcast. Today's episode, I interview best-selling author Simon Sinek, where we talk video games, life, and leadership. Simon Sinek is an author and thought leader who explores how leaders can inspire cooperation, trust, and change. He's the author of the book, Start With Why, and his latest book is titled Leaders Eat Last. His TED Talk on how leaders inspire action has over 17 million views at this moment. Recently identified as one of Inc.com's top 50 leadership and management experts, Simon's bold goal is to help build a world in which the vast majority of people go home every day feeling fulfilled by their work and he's leading a movement to inspire people to do the things that inspire them. Simon, welcome. I'm humbled and grateful for the opportunity to speak with you today. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, I'm going to jump right into it. I know that video games often get a bad reputation as being a waste of time or inspiring violence, and I'd like to ask you, what positives do you see about video games and their use? Well, I used to tell my mother when I was a kid that they were improving my hand-eye coordination. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing necessarily wrong with video games like there's nothing necessarily wrong with alcohol or gambling it's 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 the ba- it's about the balance right too much alcohol is what's bad and too much gambling is bad and too much video games is is what can be dangerous and by dangerous i don't necessarily mean the video game per se it's the manner in which we play them in other words they keep us separated from people and by talking to people online i don't that's not what i'm talking about i mean being in the company of other human beings and so when video games um make us less social unsocial that's when they're they can be dangerous but when we play video games with our friends in the company of our friends physically in the company of our friends then i think they're a wonderful tool for people to to socialize outstanding well i, I noticed on your instagram feed that you recently paid a uh, visit to a certain large uh, gaming company headquarters are you able to tell us a little bit about your time there so you mean when i went to nintendo uh yes sir <laughs> Look, they're, they're a pretty amazing company, and the thing that I love about them is, is how they sort of embody these wonderful values, patience and, and humility. They're really big into those things and care about people or working to do even more, which is what I like. It, it, what, I, what's really, what I found really fun about visiting their office was this concept of innovation. We think innovation is you know, when we invent great products, you know? and what we forget is that the best ones are always iterative. And so they have, mm. outside their cafeteria, they have sort of, the, the old video games where you'd stand in front of them, but they had one game per console. And then somebody said, well, what if we put two games per console? And, you know, you see a video game there with two, two games in it. And then somebody said, well, what if we did two games, but it was on one microchip as opposed to two completely separate chips? And you start to see the iteration till the point where you get to the, uh, the game console and then the Game Boy, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, they didn't start by imagining a Game Boy. They started with a huge, big thing and thought, how can we improve upon this? And so this is really what innovation is. Innovation is is about how to take something that you have and continuous, continuous, con- a continuous system of improvement, and the things change and change and change and get better and better and better, which I love. Where is an area you see that that same idea of iteration playing out today that's very interesting to you? There's a couple places. One, there's a company called Next Jump in New York City that embodies the idea of iteration, both in its product but also in its culture. Um, the CEO Charlie Kim understands there's no such thing as perfection and has a different way of approaching innovation. So for example, what a lot of companies do is they articulate the thing they imagine, sort of the product or service that they would like to build. And let's say it's something as simple as some sort of website, you know, and they'll start building that website to the vision. And then when they get close to it, it doesn't really quite work like they imagined. And then they start spending all their time and money trying to fix it to make it like they imagined. Charlie has a different way of doing it. He believes in what he calls uh, VX, which is version one. So what's the simplest, easiest, you know, thing you could execute that would work, but it wouldn't necessarily be perfect or the thing you imagine, but it, you could get it going. You build that and it works. Now, how do you improve it? What's, what's one thing you could do to make it even better? Okay, you've done that. Okay, now what's the one thing you can do that makes it even better? And when you continue down that path of iteration, you actually end up surpassing the other one who's still busy trying to fix it and make it work the way they wanted to. That's one remarkable example. The other one is the company 3M. Um, 3M is so incredible at sort of taking and sharing uh, information. They encourage their scientists to come and talk about um, the things they're working on, the things that um, have failed, because it, it helps other people solve problems. And they, there's so much cross-pollination in that company. It's really incredible. 
You know, you, you mentioned failure. That's an interesting notion. Uh, one thing that I've learned a lot about in video games is you have kind of a safe environment to, to fail within. How do you think that lesson of being able to fail benefits someone who's either a leader or aspiring to be a leader? Well, you know, the, the thing about um, feeling safe is just that. It's one of the things that makes us feel safe is that we have the opportunity to fail. And when we fear failing, in other words, there are many organizations where if we get something wrong, if we fail, if we lose the company money, we will lose our jobs or very much put ourselves at risk for losing our jobs. The best organizations, that, that's, that's, that's not de facto. You lose your job when you, when you violate trust. You lose your job when you hurt other people. But you don't necessarily lose your job simply um, by trying something new and not succeeding. Because when we reward trying and failing, what we're encouraging people is to try again and try again and try again, which, by the way, is the root of innovation, right? Experimentation, trying. When, when you get a one strike you're out uh, approach, all we're doing is incentivizing people to take safe roads and be careful and be and be preoccupied with their own with their own skin. And so this idea of giving people opportunities to fail, and sometimes that can mean giving someone junior a small project that they completely screwed it up. So what? You know, giving people opportunities to fail. You don't start them in the deep end. You teach them how to swim in the shallow end, mm-hmm. and they get better and better and better and build their confidence and skill set, and eventually you give them a big project. I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. As am I. I think some of the big lessons that have stuck with me have been rooted in failure. I want to change gears a little bit here and ask you independently, what is an idea or a thought for you that you would say has been a game changer, either personally or or professionally, that's really just changed the way you look at the world around you? Well, the things that I've learned, I I tend to be a sharer. And so the things that have changed my life or have been game changers for me are are the subjects of, of my books and my talks. So this discovery of this thing called the why, this naturally occurring pattern you know, that drives our behavior, profoundly changed my life. I mean, it gave me a passion that I'd never had before. It gave me a focus that I'd never had before. And it set me on this career path that I never imagined. Then this discovery of, of where trust and cooperation come from, and this idea of service and sacrifice as a, as a sort of biological and anthropological concept that um, I learned a great deal from spending time in the military, well, with the military, not, I wasn't in the military, but spending time around the military, where I, would, I kept meeting people who would willingly sacrifice their lives to save others. You know, wow, that's pretty intense. Where does that come from? Hmm. And so the things that, that I write about are not sort of academic or commercial pursuits. They are things that have profoundly changed my life, which is why I, I, I shared them with my friends. And if enough friends said, wow, that's cool, or it changed their lives, then then I wrote them down and shared them with even more people. I got uh, one closing question here for you then, uh, and I just want to ask you, have you personally uh, had any takeaway lessons or anything that you've learned from either video games or the, the video game industry itself? You know, we don't always know where our lessons come from, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'll tell you one thing that I that I certainly recognize that I do because of video games is – so I'll, I'll be playing a game, for example, and I'll always be using the same methodology uh, to try and solve a problem, right? To try and get past a level. It'll fail and I'll try again. It'll fail and I'll try again. And it'll fail and I'll try again. And I'll fail and I'll try again. And I figure to myself, well, if it keeps failing anyway, why don't I just stop caring and try something completely, completely different, a completely different strategy out of left field? And sometimes it works. And so one of the things that I have learned is sometimes the best thing to do is to throw out the strategy that you try and make work and try a completely new strategy. Hmm. That's huge. Well, Simon, I want to thank you again for your time. It's really been a pleasure sharing uh, these minutes with you here. What is the best way for individuals to connect with you so they can learn more about these ideas that, that you're spreading and sharing? All the traditional stuff. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm pretty active on Twitter. I, I like to share my little thoughts. So I have I, I use Twitter a little differently than most. You know, I use it as sort of a filing cabinet for my crazy little ideas. So uh, if I have a crazy thought or a notion or an observation, I, I put it on Twitter. So I don't forget it, quite frankly. People can tune in over there. And obviously, you know, we have a website with, with other resources on it, startwithwhy.com. Excellent. Well, thank you again for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks very much.